Well, folks, it's been a while since the last review, hasn't it? It's been four months. You'd think we'd have been back sooner, but alas. Also, you'd think we'd get back into the swing of things by doing something similar to the last reviews, but no. We're actually doing something completely different. Not wrestling. It's not hockey. It's not even a racing game. We're doing a puzzle game. Today's review, we're going to be taking a look at the PlayStation game, Double Dice. So, the basics of Double Dice. First off, what the hell is Double Dice about outside of it being a puzzle game? Well, you're these adorable little demons and, well, you gotta clear some dice off the board. It's not really plot heavy, ladies and gentlemen. And how do you get these dice off, you may ask? Well, it's real simple. You have to match up the face of the dice with how many dice they have. So if you have a six, you need six sixes to get them off the board so they can all go poof and all that jazz. Five fives, four fours, you get the gist. Now, did the previous description kind of leave you at a loss and made you go, huh? Well. Don't worry, I've got two bits of advice that'll help, and it's helped me, so hopefully it helps you. The first thing is something called the Rule of Seven, which simply means that the number on the top of the dice and the number on the bottom, they both will always equal seven. For example, if the top is showing six, the bottom of the dice is a one. If the top is a five, the bottom is a two, etc., etc. The other thing I noticed about this game that also may help is... This is one of the few games that I can remember where they straight up have a manual on the disc. It's part of the main menu. It's almost like they knew that the game that they made would be a little rough sledding to start off with. And trust me when I tell you, that manual section in the main menu will be your best friend. Just make sure you keep it close by at all times. And now on to the modes of Double Dice, which honestly, this is the part of the review where it probably makes more sense to split this in half. The single player side of things, and the multiplayer side of things. Trust me, it'll make sense once we get there. Now, once you're tired of playing single player and you feel like you have the ropes down, or, quite frankly, you're tired of cooperating with a friend in trial mode, well, this is where the versus modes come in. However, there are two very radically different versus modes. You have a one-on-one -on -one mode called Battle and a five-person free-for-all called Wars. The only thing that these two modes have in common is simply the fact that you can either play against a friend or four friends or the CPU. Let's start with the more interesting maybe simpler of the two wars mode pretty much it's you and four other players on a last man standing dice roll to the death the way you deal damage to the other four opponents is by making combos with the number on the face of the dice multiplied by how many dice are disappearing being the number and everyone takes that number of damage however here's the kicker the damage doesn't happen until the dice are completely gone so you can keep rolling more and more dice into the combo to up the damage getting dished out and having everyone else just take tons of damage. Or, if you happen to be staring down the barrel of taking damage, you can add a dice to it and steal it, thus saving yourself from what Scott Steiner would say, the numbers spelling disaster. From what I played with this mode, it can get pretty frenetic and chaotic at times, and between the way you take damage and the way you deal damage and the way you have to save yourself from damage, it kind of lends itself to being a very interesting, if I had to think of any multiplayer that's like it, it kind of reminds me of Super Bomberman, honestly, which is a very good thing. Now, as for the other mode, Battle Mode. This one is completely different in tone to wars in every way imaginable. You'd think it'd just be a one-on-one -on -one version of Wars mode, but no. Instead, this one has a completely different set of rules. You and your opponent have four boxes and you fill them up by making a combo in any order. It doesn't have to be 
number sequential or anything like that. You can steal a combo out of your opponent's box by either stealing one like you would in Wars mode, or making one of your own that happens to be in one of their boxes. The first player to fill all four of their boxes wins. Now this mode isn't as frenetic or chaotic as Wars. It's an entirely different beast. But it does add for a nice change of pace because it's not as lax and laid back as Trial Mode. So it kind of has this nice little in-between where if you don't want something so damn chaotic and you want to just play with a friend, then this would be a pretty decent middle ground mode, as it were. Now as for the single player modes, you have two main modes to really focus in on. You have Trial Mode and Puzzle Mode. Alright, let's get the shorter of the two out of the way first, and that would be Trial Mode. Now, Trial Mode is pretty much your standard single player puzzle section. You can either go for a time score, there's a couple of modes of that, or Endless Mode, where you keep going until the board fills up and that's the end of the game. There's also a co-op mode if you want to do something a little bit more chill with your friends besides the two multiplayer modes that were already discussed in this video. But this still serves as a pretty decent and basic mode to learn the ropes of the game and kind of get a little bit more comfortable with the ways of Devil Dice. Now, outside of trial mode, and in my opinion, the main single player mode you're going to be spending a lot of time with in Devil Dice is puzzle mode. Puzzle mode is pretty interesting. See, the best way I can explain puzzle mode is that it's kind of a scenario mode. In puzzle mode, you have about... Actually, you have exactly 100 puzzles. Now, here's the kicker. In all of the other modes, you're free to pretty much move however you want across the board no matter what. Now, in puzzle mode, though, you have a limited amount of steps to actually solve the puzzle. Otherwise, it's game over for you. Now, you're probably thinking to yourself, well, that's not all that special, Danny. Why point that out, outside of it being another mode to cover and to pad the length of this video out? Well, I'll tell you exactly why. First off, for being a smartass. Secondly, is that the more you play the levels, the more you'll realize that some of the dice have different characteristics. For example, some of them dice you can't move. Some of the dice are ice and slide all over the board. Some of the dice you can only move one step at a time. To be honest, having these different variations of the dice with all the different, you know, characteristics to it, on top of a limited amount of times you can move, really adds a second layer, well an extra layer, of depth in thinking all this, which is particularly interesting after a while. And quick note before we're done with this part of the review, just when you thought you were done with this, if you can manage to get through all 100 levels of puzzle mode, you get random mode. A nearly infinite amount of levels, and it's just as it says. Think of it as a roguelike version of puzzle mode. Now, can I recommend Devil Dice to you? Well, this is going to take a bit of nuance, so bear with me. If you like more of a pick-up-and-play easier puzzler like a Tetris or a Puyo Puyo, this game may not really work for you, but if you have the patience to stick with the learning curve and the patience to learn the ins and outs of Double Dice, then it becomes a particularly rewarding game and I could recommend it to you if you can stick with it. The game will be right up your alley and it'll provide tons of fun and it will become real addicting and probably one of even your go-to party games if I, for PS1 if I do say so myself. I can't stress enough though, as long as you have the patience, then this game is for you. And that'll do it for this review, folks. Again, sorry for the incredibly long interval in between reviews. That I'm going to try and work on shortening, hopefully. But if you did like this review, then I'd, well, let's be honest, you know what to do at this point. Like and maybe even subscribe would help out the channel a ton. If you really want to go the extra mile, I stream four times a week over on Twitch. You know, who knows, maybe you'll see some of the games that I review as a stream game every now and then. Either way, thanks for checking out the review again, and I'll see you next time. So long, everybody.